hello everyone in this video we are going to talk about the anatomy of the female pelvis regarding to the obstetrician view now let's start this is the first kind of video of its own it's very informative please stay attention now the female pelvis is made of four bones the first bone is this hip bones then two hip, hip bones second is this sacrum and the fourth one is coccyx you got one two hip bones one sacrum one coccyx now now if we see the joints of the if we want to go from behind then I can also explain you the all four uh, bones this is a hip bone both side of hip bone this all this thing you are saying is a sacrum and this is coccyx okay now see I am going to show you four joints of the female pelvis there are four joints which are they first one pubic symphysis second one sacroiliac joint this is the sacroiliac joint of both sides so three joints are there and third one is sacrococcygeal joint now the hip bone is made up of three main parts this is the hip bone the bigger part is called ilium this part is called pubis and this part is called ischium so ilium pubis and ischium now i am gonna tell you the various parts of the female fetus now let's see the female pelvis are divided into two parts the first one is true pelvis and the second one is false pelvis what is false pelvis and true pelvis the difference between false pelvis and true pelvis is because of this pelvic brim this my friends you are showing here is a pelvic brim above the pelvic brim this is there is a false pelvis and below the pelvic brim there will be true pelvis i will show you very deeply see i am talking about this this is the pubic sorry pelvic brim got my point this is the pelvic this is the pelvic brim now above this part is the false pelvis below this part is the true pelvis below this part is the true pelvis now I will show you this one uh, see my friends we are now going to enter into first of all this is false pelvis now we are we have passed through the brim and now we have entered into the true pelvis now you got my point what I'm talking about okay let's see now I am going to talk about the various uh, boundaries of the pelvic brim let's see it very closely pelvic brim starts with the sacral promontory and this my friend is the nothing but a sacral promontory this part makes the sacral promontory now from the sacral promontory to ella of sacrum this is ella of sacrum sacral promontory is sp this is ella of sacrum now this is sacroiliac joint now the iliopectineal line you can see here iliopectineal line 
फिर इलियो पेक्टिनल एमिनंस फिर प्यूबिक ट्यूबरकल हियर एंड दिस इज रेमस एंड सिम्फाइसिस प्यूबिस बोथ साइड इट अकर्स लाइक दैट ओनली नाउ we are going to talk about the various diameters of the female pelvis and various parts of the female pelvis now the true pelvis is here if you are seeing here the true pelvis true pelvis divided into three parts inlet cavity and outlet this is my friend the inlet of the true pelvis this one is the inlet of the true pelvis this one okay now what is the outlet outlet you have to see from behind this is my friend you are seeing is the outlet of the pelvis this is rhomboid shape outlet of the pelvis okay and between the inlet and outlet there lies is the cavity of the pelvis and this is my friend is the cavity of the pelvis now now let's talk about various diameters of all these three inlet cavity and outlet now this is the inlet i will uh, uh, do it as a inlet as a uh, pink thing okay okay so this my friend is a pelvic inlet okay so now this diameter makes the anti uh, transverse diameter and this diameter makes the anterior posterior diameter okay so how we measure the transverse and anterior posterior diameter see if we see this inlet it's like an oval structure it has two diameters anterior posterior and transverse diameters now let's talk about how each and every diameter happens see the transverse diameter of this pelvic inlet is very straight forward here to here it's around 13 cm the transverse diameter of inlet it's around 13 cm now if we talk about anterior posterior diameter then there are three different anterior posterior diameter we will going to see these things right now let's go if we see here friends if we see here i am trying to make you as possible as visualized okay here is the sacral promontory here is the sacral promontory everybody now okay with this thing here is the sacral promontory and here is the pubic uh, symphysis sympathi pubis, pubis joint now let's talk about the true conjugate that is anterior posterior diameter or anatomical conjugate anatomical conjugate makes from the uh, sacral promontory to the upper border of the pubis uh, symphysis pubis you got my point i am talking about again i am going to talk mm. this my friend from symphysis pubis to sacral promontory up and upper border of 
pubis. pubis. This is upper border of sympathesis pubis. Okay, this is called true conjugate. True conjugate is actually the very anatomical diameter, and it is it is it is uh, about eleven centimeter. Now let's talk about what is anatomical, what is obstetrical conjugate. Obstetrical conjugate is from sacral uh, promontory to the inner border of the symphysis pubis here inner border. So this makes it's a obstetric conjugate it is very less around 10 centimeter only and if we talk about the third one that is diagonal conjugate it start from the sacral promontory to lower border of the symphysis pubis that makes it at 12 centimeter diagonal conjugate now friends it is diagonal conjugate which we measure when we do the per vaginal examination clinically. Now, what is the most important diameter? Obstetric conjugate is the most important diameter because of the baby's head should pass from that obstetric diameter. So, if the obstetric diameter is less than 10, then there is going to be difficulty in passing the head of the baby because the head of the baby is on an average around 9 to 10 centimeter of diameter head uh, by parietal diameter is around 9 to 10 centimeter so 9 centimeter so basically a 10 centimeter gap should be required to pass the baby's head inside the cake inlet so these three diameters are the makes the in, anterior posterior diameters of the inlet and one diameter that is transverse diameter we just talk about it okay now now let's move to the cavity when we talk about when we talk about cavity so we talk about reaching it inside the cavity now this is the uh, rim and we have reached inside the cavity my friend you see the inside the cavity this you are seeing is a mid pelvis. How can you measure the diameters of pelvic cavity? Again, anterior, posterior, and transverse diameter are there for even cavity purpose. Now, see, let's see. This is the anterior posterior diameter of this is the anterior posterior diameter of cavity it's around 12 centimeter this is the transverse diameter of the cavity it's also around 12 centimeter but when the when we reach to the uh, where but when we reach to the spine level this my friends are the for your kind information this structures are called ischial spine here these are the most important station when the, we talk about obstetrics this is the ischial spine the interspinous distance makes the pelvis adequate good or bad because this diameter is the smallest diameter of the pelvis around 10 centimeter so hardly allowing the petal head if this spines are very converged and prominent like this then the baby's head cannot pass from this and the baby is going to end at arrest this is the site, ischial spine is the site where the internal rotation happens. I am going to talk a little, little more here. See, these are the ischial spine. Here, everything happens. These are. Okay. Deep transverse arrest occurs here. 
this is the zero station of this uh, uh, ahead when we talk about station of the head we take initial oh, sorry we take this points as a zero station above this and below this we take a measurements external os is also at the initial spine level this is interspinous diameter is almost 10 cm but it should be always more than 10 cm now now let's talk about the outlet of the pelvis this is my friend the outlet of the pelvis this one you see here this is the outlet of the pelvis the outlet is the rhomboid kind of variety this is the rhomboid kind of shape or variety It makes again anteriorly the symphysis pubis, posteriorly the sacral promontory, and laterally this structure are ischial tuberosity. Ischial tuberosity, this markers. Okay, so the diameter of outlet are not very very small or short. They are okay. For example, this diameter is all in average around 12 to 13 centimeter, and this diameter entry opposite also around 10 12 centimeter. So there is no problem in outlet kind of problems. Okay, now now let's talk about the axis of the labor. Axis of a, of a labor makes uh, is made as per the inlet axis of the inlet cavity and outlet C. Now, in the outlet, the axis is kind of downward backwards. In the cavity, it becomes like this downwards and forwards. And in the output outlet it becomes downwards and forwards so this is the main labor curve that every fetal head has to pass to get bypass from the so to get pass from the see this one this is the zone this is the root it comes like that okay now you got to what what i'm talking about and this makes your pelvis female pelvis okay thank you